what are the initial emotions after a stunning loss like that where you guys were kind of rolling so much in the first half and then to be sitting here with a loss? I feel like any loss is like you don't really take it that good. I don't think uh, it's feel good losses. I feel like all losses feel the same. Dad was just talking about how he noticed complacency heading into the locker room. Yeah. What was his message at the at the half? There? <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie. I'm <laughs> I don't even remember because I was just so locked in. I was just a different uh, mind frame. You got to get in when you know you're playing for a quarter. So really, I just like uh, staying just focused and staying in that mode and really just carry that throughout the whole game. Do you feel like you tried to change the approach as an offense heading into the second half, or because it had worked so well in the first half, it was let's just keep doing it, like 29 points? Well, I'm not sure. I just executed the plays that was called. I didn't really look at it in a big grand scheme of things. Trader, Troy Finnegan, CU Sports Report. Take me through the last play in overtime, the interception, and what you saw on that play as you were kind of escaping, trying to make a play. Uh, it was just a dumb play. I just threw it up. Simple. Hey, Shador, uh, just what was it like playing with Travis again tonight, though? It was good. He explosive player. It was good to have him back out there. Uh, we got to work through some uh, work through some plays and stuff with him to make sure he's all, all the ways in the right spot. But when the ball gets in his hand, he, he's explosive. Shador, Kyle Newman from the Denver Post. How do you guys flush this one and kind of, you know, keep the ultimate goal and, and the bowl season in mind after this tough loss? I mean, I'm not even thinking that far yet. <laughs> I got to at least feel this one first. Uh, Shador, on the, on the first drive of the second half, when you kind of took that sack that kind of pushed you guys on the fourth down play, did you feel a loss of momentum there at all? No, it was never a loss of momentum. It was just uh, we just got to understand you got you can't peak too high, you can't be too low. You got to always stay level-headed with everything. Uh, that was the that was the biggest thing. It was just like you know we never had that feeling of um, dominating in the first half. So then that's when a lot of people you'll say it peaked too fast, to where everybody un don't really understand. Like we got to be the same way, same approach, same everything. It's a difference with saying that, and it's a difference with meaning and going about it each and everything. So um, slow starts just always happen when just one or two people mess up on a play. And then it just messes up. And what was so easy? Wh what was so easy for you guys offensively in the first half that kind of disappeared there in the second half? Attention to detail. That's it. Shador, how disappointing you know, with the way the offense was going in the first half? How disappointing that offensively you guys couldn't get much going in the second half to help your defense out when they were on the run? It was definitely frustrating because, like I say, it was one or two players away from uh, really hitting explosive plays, from doing the right things each and every. Uh, drive we had so uh, when you really like when we look at the film and what I noticed on the field is just air, all 11 players got to do their job and that's it we can't because the stuff going to catch up when it catch up and uh, I caught up to us today folks from the outside you know there's not much middle ground on you guys there's lovers and there's haters and you've addressed both of them uh, what do you say to outsiders who are going to say man uh, 13 went off. Travis had too many snaps. He came back too early. He was tired. He was this. He was that. Because they don't know. You know. What would you say to them? I mean, I don't really think that's a focus point for me at all. Um, I'm mainly, mainly focused on the team and focused on what we need to improve on. And uh, they, The people are going to hate you and love you. So you got to understand that's what you, you can't. You can't uh, be happy when everything's good and sound when everything's bad. You got to be the same person regardless. So that's that's basically where I just stay and how I live my life is just level-headed throughout the whole game, staying the same way, not getting too up, not getting too down. Because as you've seen, thing, things could go left quick. And today's a, a moment to show that live in person. Sure, your dad was saying in here earlier that he's never really been a part of a, a game. He can't remember that, you know, he blew a 29 point lead at halftime. I'm sure the same can be said for you. Um, how do you move on from a game like this? I mean, we got to accept this one first. And it's just like, it's just a different level of, I would say, focus, different level of attitude, different level of just seriousness because the little things, even 
like when we score touchdowns, we still busting routes. Like we just can't afford to do that because it's gonna catch up when it catch up. So that's the main thing. Like understand when when, when guys busting routes and when I'm not getting making the right read, getting the ball in my hand, uh, doing the right thing, then it gotta be some some punishment for it. We gotta be able to grow from it and not keep making the same mistakes. Ralph Simpson, Odessa TV. First, I want to congratulate you. Uh, what you did in the community, how you helped the community and your team. Mm -hmm. You know, Michael Jordan hit the set and set bets. Mm -hmm. Before he won championships. Yeah. The Detroit Pistons had to have some set bets mm -hmm. before they won some championships. Yeah. You got some championships in coming. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some, some things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. And y'all got greatness in you, and it's coming. For sure. Appreciate it, man. I feel the same way. Ariel or Suda, Nine News, um, your coach, father, um, said that his message after the game was that some players either like or love the game, mm -hmm. and there's a separation between the two. Do you feel personally that there is that separation in the locker room, that some players just aren't fully buying in. They don't fully love this game right now. I mean, I'm not going to point fingers. That's not what I'm here for. Uh, I let the coaches, that's, that's, that's what they're here for. That's, they're here to guide us. So I can't, I can't really say that and throw no teammate under the bus because that's not what type of player I am. Uh, the guys know that know, you know, um, and that's it. But I will never put a teammate down and say he's not fully in if, he probably is. Not really. I mean, possibly. I feel like it could be that everywhere in the country. But we possibly could have it too. So that's not up for me to decide. I'm just up to decide, just make the right reads, uh, win games, get the ball in my hands, and just push the team. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.